Hello world and welcome to another episode of Fubar. Today we are going to build a serverless application using global tables from DynamoDB and AWS CDK. So what are global tables? Global tables are a feature from DynamoDB that provides replication for your tables. So there are a specific type of table that you can create and basically it will be replicated in multiple regions of AWS. The cool thing about this replication, that is what is called an active-active, um, multi-region, kind of multi-primary in a way, because every replica of this table allows writes. This is totally managed by AWS. So basically the moment you put an item in one of the replicas, it will get automated, replicated in all the different regions that you specify within one second. I will not go into a lot of details about global tables because there is a really great video that is made by one of the Dynamo DB uh, developer advocates where he goes and explains all the different features that global tables provide. I will leave the video in here and in the description box and you can go and get into it. But in that video, he shows how to use the console and how to build something uh, from there. So I want to show you how you can create a global table with CDK, because as we know, building multi-region applications needs to be done with infrastructure as code. There is two ways to build global tables with AWS CDK. There is the easiest way and a little bit more challenging one, but the easiest way has some um, problems and I want to show you the two ways and I want to show you what are the problems and uh, that you might face if you go through the easiest path. Just in order for you to understand if you want to go from one side or to the other and what happens if you, you choose either of the paths. So let's go to the code and see this in action. So the easiest way to build a global table is using the level two constructor from AWS CDK for Dynamo tables. So we can basically build a table in the same way uh, that we are building any normal table. Any global table can be built this way. We put a name, we define the partition key, the sort key if we have one, and then we need to add the replication regions. So here I added a couple of attributes and I will get into those in a moment, but let's stay with this simple format for now. So when we deploy this into AWS, it will look like this. So here you can see uh, my level two table and this is in Ireland, as you can see. Uh, there is nothing, so we don't have any items. Let's add an item. So let's put here a value, Marcia, Marcia Ireland. And let's create the item. So that's good. And now we can see the replica in Virginia. That is the other place where we are creating this replica. So let's go here and open it in Virginia. So here is the same table in Virginia now, and we can explore the items and we have the Marcia Ireland one. And this goes in one second, it gets replicated, and if we will have multiple replicas in different regions, it will work exactly the same. So we can uh, edit this if we want, and it will get replicated automatically in uh, Ireland. So if we put here two, basically it will come and we look the Ireland version, here it is, we can say that Marsa Airline is two and we are in Ireland. So that's good. On the surface, everything looks quite good. However, I show you that there were two attributes when I created the table. Let's look at them. The first attribute is the removal policy. The removal policy is a very important item attribute when you're working with databases. By default, the removal policy, when you create a table with CDK, it's set to retain. So I will not need to do this, but I want to show it to you so you can see this in action. And this means that uh, when you remove the CloudFormation stack, the database will not get removed. And this is a security mechanism because you don't want to lose your data. <laughs> so this, I put it here on purpose, but if we will not put it it will be exactly the same because by default it added. The second one is the point in time recovery. 
This is a snapshot that is taken regularly of our uh, table. So we have a snapshot and we can back up this table. So these are two properties that are uh, put in place. So let's see what happens in our tables now. Let's go to Ireland. And here we have our table in Ireland. So let's look at the properties of this table. You can see here that it has the point in time recovery enabled. And I cannot show you the return policy, but I will show it to you in a moment when I delete this. Uh, so stay with me. But if we go to backups, you can see that the uh, point in time recovery is enabled. Now let's go to our Virginia one and see what happens. So here we are in Virginia. Now you can see here is Virginia. And if we go to additional info, it says that the snapshots are not uh, enabled. We go to backups, boom, it has them disabled. And now uh, we have some items in the database. I show you that uh, we have one item, so we can get one item here. So that's good. We have it replicated in Ireland and in Virginia. So we can uh, delete this database and see what happens. But before deleting this database, I want to show you the CloudFormation stack so you understand what just happened why the replicas are not exactly the same. So if we go to the main region that we set like uh, primary where we are going to deploy, like when we do CDK deploy, what we have configured in my case is Ireland. And you can see here that it's creating the uh, stack. And then you can see this nest, nest stack. So what is that? Well, let's open this stack and see what is in there can see the resources and we can see here that we have a table and then we have this replica provided nest stack. This means that it's creating this net nest stack. And what is this nest stack doing? Nest stack is such a hard word. It's basically using a custom resource to create those uh, replica tables. So basically now our CloudFormation stack is separated into two parts, the stack, uh, this level two stack that has the resources, the table, and then this uh, custom resource. And then this custom resource create the replicas using an uh, API call or SDK call, and they are disassociated. So that's why we have this kind of uh, difference between the replicas and the primary one, and we should not have. In the case of global tables, everything should be exactly the same, and that's the idea. So let's see what happens when we remove this. I, I, I show you that uh, we have created these uh, items, so we have this item replicated, so we have the retain policy to retain. We don't want this database to go, nor the primary, because there is no primary, nor any of the replicas. So let's remove this and see what happens. So I will go to my code and I will type cdk destroy and the name of the stack. By the way, the code I'm using, you will see, uh, you can uh, get it later, so don't worry. I will put the name of the stack and this will remove everything, the stack and the nested and see what happens. So let's get back when this is uh, destroyed. So now the stack is deleted so we can see what happened. So if we go to the stack in CloudFormation, we can see that there is nothing. So that's good. We deleted the stack. Uh, now what we can do is we can check what happens to the tables. Let's check first in, in Ireland and we can see if the table is there. We can in Ireland and we see that the table is there because the retain policy is to retain the table, not to delete it. So that's good. We can see that we have our item there. So everything is good. So now we can see what happened in Virginia. Here you can see that the table doesn't exist in this region. So, mm, we lost the data in the region because we deleted a stack. That's not good. So let's see what is the right way of doing this uh, in a way that your um, application is safe. So the right way is to use the level one constructor. I know level one constructors are um, not nice because we have, when we are using CDK, we have different levels of constructors. We have level one that is kind of 
the one-to-one -one with cloud formation, level two, that is a little bit more abstraction. So in the case of level two, it came uh, for Dynamo, it came with a lot of assumptions and defaults. And then we have a level three, but that's uh, more like build up components. Um, but in the case of a level one constructor, we will need to define a lot of things ourselves. But when you're using global tables, I think it's worth effort because you are thinking about replication and you're thinking about multi-region for a reason. I have made a video on covering the reasons why you are making multi-region, but you want to have that failover, you want to have that resiliency in your application. And if for any reason you destroy the stack and you lose that resiliency, then all this work is pointless. So building this multi-region uh, with this level one constructor might be a good way. So how do you do it? Well, you use that uh, CFN global table constructor. That is the global table level one constructor for Dynamo. And then you start defining the different attributes. So the first attribute that we are going to need is the table name. Then we are going to define the primary key. And if we have a sort key, we are defining it there. Then we are going to set up the billing mode. In this case, we are using an on-demand uh, mode, basically serverless. Then we need to enable uh, streams, Dynamo streams, uh, replication between regions, rely on Dynamo streams. So you need to have them enabled in order for this to work. Uh, when you create the level two constructor, it relies or it will do it by default. But if you are doing the level one, you need to enable it. If not, this will not work. And then you need to create an array with the different replicas. And if you want some configuration for these replicas, you need to put them here. So you can see here that I will decide for each region, the for each replica, the region, where it's going to be replicated. Uh, these are coming from configuration. I will give you the code. You can configure it however you like. And then we have this configuration of the point in uh, time recovery. And this is the snapshots that I was showing you before. We need to enable it in each of the replicas. You don't need them in each of the replicas, but uh, if you want them, you just enable them from there. And then finally, we have the uh, removal policy to retain the data when we destroy the uh, stacks. We don't want to remove the tables if that happens. So this is uh, what we have. So now let's see this in action. If we go to CloudFormation, we can uh, see my stack here. And if we go to the resources, we can see that I have a uh, global table, that's the uh, CloudFormation resource, because we are now having a global table uh, that is replicated into multiple regions. So that's good. And then if we open that table in uh, Virginia, it doesn't matter which one I open first, because now they're exactly the same. We can uh, see the properties there. We can um, basically go to the back up and check that everything is set up because we have set it up manually and we create an um, an item. We can just add a new item and see how the replication works. It works exactly the same than previously because that doesn't change. So we create the item. And then if we open this uh, table from Ireland, that is the other region, then we should be uh, seeing the item. So now I have the table uh, in Ireland and basically I can uh, go and see that we have the snapshots enabled and we can explore the item. And there is Marcia from Virginia that was replicated exactly like it was before. So now if you want, we can uh, delete the stack and see what happens. So I go back here and we'll open and uh, delete that level one stack. Now I'm just getting the stack name so I can delete it. I will run a uh, CDK destroy and the name of the stack and that will delete this stack. So I will be back when this is deleted and we can see what happens. So now my stack is deleted. If I go to CloudFormation, I cannot see it anymore. So what happens? What do we see in Dynamo? Let's check it out. In Ireland. So if we go to Ireland, I can see here my table and I can explore the items. And there is Marcia from Virginia. And let's see what happens if we open it from Virginia. Here is my table from Virginia and I can see my items. So my two tables, my two replicas are still up even though I remove the stack. 
So that's the video for today. I hope you like this video and I show you how to choose between two different ways of constructing the same thing, but how CDK does it one way that is eh, and the other way that is even better. So I hope that helps you. And this video is part of a series of architecting multi-region serverless applications. So if you are interested in that, I will leave you the playlist. You can check it out here um, to learn more. And if you want to learn more about patterns to replicate data when building multi-region applications, I leave you that video as well. So I see you in the next episode of Uva. Ciao, ciao!